August 26, write down that date. That's when Barita's additional public offer opens and 200 million new ordinary shares will go on sale. I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button. Give you some time. Subscribe to this channel and turn on those post notifications. Also subscribe to our newsletter by clicking the link in the description below. Remember our merch is now here. Email admin at kalilaraymedia.com to order your let's get this money t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> we're also now accepting orders from outside Jamaica and later in the show I'll be doing another giveaway and announcing last week's winner. Plus, you can win a $20,000 gift certificate to invest in stocks of your choice. All you have to do is post a video on your social media explaining how Money Mondays JA or Taking Stock has made a difference to you. Tag at Kalila Ray and at Taking Stock JA in the video and the winner will be announced in next week's episode of Taking Stock. And you might also see yourself on the episode. All right, now to Barita. At its annual general meeting on July 6, Barita shareholders passed two resolutions to allow the company to issue up to 200 million ordinary shares in an additional public offering. If there is excess demand, the company will have the option to add another 100 million ordinary shares, bringing it to as much as 300 million new shares in the company. And these new ordinary shares will be priced somewhere between 48 and 53 Jamaican dollars. That's about 33 to 37 cents US. That means the company could be looking to raise between 9.6 and 10.6 billion Jamaican dollars or between 66 and 73 million US dollars. If the offer is upsized, they could rake in as much as 15.9 billion Jamaican or 110 million US dollars. Now, there'll also be reserved shares for certain groups of investors at a price determined by the company. The APO is scheduled to open, like I said, on August 26 and close on September 16. Now, I know some of you may be scratching your head like, what's an APO? I know I've explained this before, but for those of you who are new to the channel or if you don't remember, let me give you a quick reminder. In an APO, companies already listed on the stock exchange issue new ordinary shares to members of the public. Anyone can participate in an APO. You don't have to be a shareholder of the company. That's why it's different from a rights issue where new shares are issued to people who are already shareholders of the company. Got that? All right. So back to Barita. Last year, they raised 10.2 billion Jamaican dollars, about 75 million US, through two rights issues and the preference shares issue. They did a non-renounceable rights issue in March 2019, bringing in 4 billion Jamaican dollars, about 30 million US. Then there was a preference share issue in May, which brought in another 1 billion Jamaican, or about 7.4 billion, sorry, 7.4 million US. And then in September, they raised 5.2 billion or about 38 million US from a renounceable rights issue. Now, renounceable rights issue is kind of similar to an APO. It means shareholders can renounce their rights to buy the new shares, opening up to non-shareholders to take up the offer. The difference with an APO is that these shares are available to non-shareholders from the jump. You wouldn't have to wait on existing shareholders to turn down the offer in order for you to get a piece. So what do they do with all this money and what do they want to use this new money for? Well, in the circular posted on the JSC for the March 2019 rights issue, Barita stated that the funds would be used to improve their ability to earn interest, increase its managed funds and product offerings and fund its new and assertive marketing strategy. For the money raised in the September rights issue, they said that would be used to pursue investment opportunities, expand their investment banking, and finance their regional expansion through growth, mergers, and acquisitions. 
So what have we seen so far? Well, they've certainly kept up their end of the bargain with their new and assertive marketing campaign. Barita Investments is active on social media with graphics that are always current and they've been quite interactive with their followers. The multiple fundraisers have pushed Barita now to become a mid-sized capitalized operation. A successful APO would further propel them to become one of the largest capitalized securities firms in Jamaica. Remember too, last November, Barita had announced that it had acquired a 5% stake in proven investments valued at nearly 10 million US dollars. Also remember that Cornerstone Investments Holdings Limited acquired a majority stake in Barita in August 2018. Investment that we've made, I'm sure, um, Jameson agree, is, is one of the best that we could ever have made and all the investments we've made so far. Because I believe in my mind that the group led by Cornerstone and how it has evolved. So the 2019 financial year was the first full year of operations since then. And Barita Investments has seen significant increase in revenue and net profit. Revenue for the 2019 fiscal year stood at $4 billion. That's more than triple the previous year. According to Barita's 2019 annual report, growth in revenue was due to an increase in services, growth in asset management and securities trading, and new customers. Barita also added a private wealth division, and in December 2018, they began offering investment banking. And even though operating expenses did double, the company realized net profit of 1.7 billion Jamaican dollars. That's about five times higher than a year earlier when it was just 360 million. Hear me now? Just 360 million. Well, at the end of their 2019 financial year, Barita had assets totaling $41 billion. The company's equity stood at $13.4 billion. That's nearly seven times their capital of $2 billion in 2018. So they've been achieving phenomenal growth. And of course, these results have boosted their share price. The stock traded for as high as $96.17 or about 67 cents US. Now, for those watching from abroad, that's high by Jamaican standards. Now, Barita's growth continued into the early part of this year, 2020, with strong operational results. For the six months ending March 31, 2020, Barita Investments posted total operating revenue of $2.3 billion, or double the $1.1 billion a year earlier. Net profit rose to $1 billion, or double the $517 million a year earlier. The company also had a cash balance of $3 billion. So the question to be asked is, is this revenue growth sustainable? Should you give them even more money? At the company's AGM recently, General Manager Paula Barclay disclosed that the money raised in 2019 would be used to fuel their growth and performance over the next year. The company has plans to open two locations sometime next year. What do we plan to do in the next um, financial year? Just a few insights. We intend to open at least two new locations. We will be on Nutsford Boulevard in New Kingston and we will have an additional location in Montego Bay. Our locations, of course, are going to be very smart looking at the end of the day. Um, we'll have a lot of electronic interaction, and for those customers who still want the traditional um, interaction, that will also be available. Again, what is coming? Digital engagement, we're going to have a lot of focus on digital engagement of our clients, we now have a new website. If you haven't been on it, please go so. Go to the website. We are interacting with quite a few clients through our website. We are now able to open accounts electronically. And coming soon, we will be able to do our IPOs and APOs electronically. Now remember in the circular for the September 2019 rights issue, they did say that funds would be used for the regional expansion through mergers and acquisitions. So. I'm listening out to hear the major deals that will come from their pipeline over the next 12 months. Now, in a recent episode of Taking Stock, the analysts Simon Johnson, Jody Ann Aris, and Devroy Davis weighed in on Barita's APO and their plans 
for all this money. Yo. Opening in New Kingston and Montego Bay is not going to cost $30 billion <laughs> because the 17 they already have plus the up to 14 that they're going to raise. They have something up their sleeve. Simon, do you have any inkling what it might be? I'm not sure, but what I can say is that um, within an environment, a recessionary environment, there is no better thing to have than $30 billion. Um, the, the, I agree. The company, the company will be well positioned um, to make any form of mergers slash acquisitions. Based on where I am, where, where I sit in the market, in the capital mm -hmm. markets, I may know some things that I can't mention All right. um, publicly. But I would say look on the broader group, the Cornerstone yeah. group, That's and right. where, where Cornerstone wants to take all of their subsidiary com companies. Just remember that um, Cornerstone has a commercial banking license. Right, and they also have the investment banking arm which recently launched, no? Yeah, so I mean, that's all I can say. That's all, all right, I can then. say publicly, really. So what else is in the market and see what it is that they're missing and that could possibly link you to what it is that they could be doing. But they want, they're definitely coming to companies. So what it is that they don't have, they're going to, I guess, use this fund to acquire. Now, of course, this is all speculation. For more information on how the company will actually use all of this cash, we'll have to wait for the prospectus to drop. Make sure to watch this space. When it comes out, of course, we'll have a full breakdown and review. Keep watching as well. I have a giveaway coming up. But first, here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. Jamaica's latest creative hub opened its doors in downtown Kingston over the weekend. They hope to appeal to persons who work in the creative and cultural industries. We'll find out more from co-founder and executive director at Kingston Creative, Andrea Dempster-Chung. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. A lumina refinery Jamalco is to list on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And U.S. stock Telsa rose more than 300% since March, despite COVID-19. It then jumped a further 5% on news of its latest earnings last week. We'll discuss. I'm Kalila Reynolds, and that's it for this episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. Follow them on social media at We Are Proven and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Kalila Ray. Of course, hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube shows this video to more people. Subscribe to this channel to learn more each week. And if you've learned anything useful today, share with a friend. Now, congratulations to last week's winner, Shane Smith. You've won yourself one of our Let's Get This Money t-shirts. Email admin at kalilaraymedia.com to claim your prize. And guys, if you want one, just email that address to place your order. And now it's time for today's giveaway. Here's the question. How is an APO different from a rights issue? Answer in the comments. You have until Friday, July 31 to post your answer. The winner will be chosen at random from the correct answers and announced in next week's episode. Until then, I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.